In this video, we will see the derivation of electric field at the center of a charged arc. Let's take a positively charged arc. Its radius is capital R and the angle subtended by the arc at its center is alpha. So our goal is to find the magnitude of electric field at the center of this arc. Uh, we can choose a small portion of this arc that makes an angle theta with horizontal. Okay, And then we should find the electric field due to the small portion and then we can do the integration to get the electric field due to the entire arc. Okay, So first we have to find the electric field due to the smaller portion then we can integrate that value to get the electric field uh, due to the entire arc. We can redraw this here. Hence the uh, smaller arc is also a part of the bigger one. Its radius is also same as that of the bigger one and that is equal to the capital R. And the angle uh, enclosed or contained in this smaller arc element is d theta. We assume that the charge on this entire arc is capital Q, uh, then the charge on the small portion will be dQ. Okay, and uh, we know the arc length uh, that is the product of its radius and the angle contained in it. Okay, so here the radius is capital R and the angle enclosed by the arc is d theta. So we can get the length of this smaller arc by multiplying its radius with the angle contained in it, that is r times d theta. Next we will find the linear charge density lambda that is the amount of charge contained per unit length of the arc. We know the charge in arc element and its length. So we can divide these two values to get the linear charge density. So that is dq divided by r times d theta. Then we can rearrange this equation to get the value of the charge dq. So we will get lambda times r d theta. Okay. This term on division will move to this side and become a product of it. Okay. Let's take the electric field of the smaller element as DE. We know that the direction of electric field due to a charged body is always normal towards surface. In this case, normal to the each and every point of this arc element passes through its center. That is the basic property of a circle. Um, and also we have taken the charge value as positive. So the direction of the small element of electric field is always radially outwards. So the angle is theta, this is also equal to theta, we can see from this diagram. Then we can dissolve this electric field vector into two components, one horizontal component dEx and one vertical component dEy. Let's keep this aside, we know the formula of electric field kq by r square. Let's use that formula, here we have a small electric field dE, so I am using dq instead of q. Okay. Let's substitute the value of dq. We will get k times lambda r theta by r square. You can cancel the uh, r in the denominator with one in the numerator. So you will be left with k lambda t theta by r. We can express this electric field in vector form. Uh, so dE vector is equal to dEx of minus i cap plus dy into minus j cap. So i and j indicates the uh, unit vector along horizontal and vertical direction. I indicates the unit vector along minus x axis and minus j cap indicates the unit vector along minus y, negative y axis. Okay. This equation indicates the electric field due to the uh, small element. To get the electric field due to the entire arc, we have to integrate this value. You can see the angle value is, the entire angle value is alpha. You can split this into two half because the angle should be measured from the horizontal line. In the, up, in the upper part of the horizontal line, the angle should be measured as positive one. In the lower part, that should be measured as a negative one. In this case, the entire angle is alpha. Then the upper part will be alpha by two and the lower part will be alpha by two. Since it is the lower part, we can use a negative sign. So the arc starts from the minus alpha by two to plus alpha by two. Okay, so that's the limit of integration minus alpha by 2 to plus alpha by 2. So we can apply the integration on both sides. We will get an equation like this and uh, substitute the value of dEx. Okay, dEx value is dE cos theta and dEy value is dE sin theta. Uh, we know the value of dE here. We can use that value here. Okay, so that's the, instead of dE, you have to replace this value. So you will get k lambda d theta by r. Here also you will get k lambda d theta by r. We know that the sin of minus theta is minus sin theta. Uh, this turns out to be a odd function. So we can make it zero here. So this value is equal to zero. So we will be left with only this part alone. Okay. Now you can see that the entire vertical component is getting zero. We only have the horizontal component alone. This is because for every element in the 
top of this line there will be a similar element at the bottom so electric field due to that element will be like this so that is also can be resolved into two components one vertical and one horizontal uh, you can see the horizontal components are added together but the vertical components are equal and opposite together so they will cancel each other that's why the vertical component is zero now you will be left with the only uh, horizontal component alone okay now we can take the constant value outside that is k lambda by r and uh, we will be left with only cos theta and d theta integration of cos theta is sin theta then we have to substitute the upper and lower limits in it so instead of theta we have to replace the upper limit alpha by 2 and lower limit minus alpha by 2 and these two minus will become plus and we can add them together so you'll get 2 times sin alpha by 2 so this is in vector form uh, we can find the magnitude by simply squaring this equation so we will get e times k lambda 2 sin alpha by 2 here the negative sign in the vector form indicates the direction of electric field that is also in the horizontal line negative x axis that's why uh, this negative sign is here okay